What if in the next three months, you were able to make an extra 5k on the side while you work your corporate gig? If you heard that statement and you do not believe it's true or you feel that is nearly impossible, I will tell you it is very doable and possible with a bit of persistence and work on the side. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this specifically with website design. So you can keep your corporate job, or if you want to go all the way freelance, this process is going to work for you. It's a three month process to go from corporate life to freelance life. All right. Are you ready to go? Let's hop in. First thing is this, do you need to learn how to code? The answer is no. Just like a kid learns how to speak before they learn how to read and write, you can start building websites today with no code background. And also, do you need to do some type of coding bootcamp or some type of design bootcamp? No, not at all. You don't need to do a UI UX bootcamp to get up and running. Now, you are gonna need a little bit of money to do this, anywhere between 100 to say $500 to make this whole process work because you're gonna need to launch websites and buy domains and do things like that. But overall, if you're working a corporate job, you should be able to bring that to life somehow. You could probably actually do this for less than $100, but I don't wanna say $50 and then someone in the comments says it was $55, it cost them $55. Okay, look, 100 bucks will get you everything you need to get up and running, somewhere between 100 to 500. Next, you're going to need about four hours a week. And this is really focused work time. This isn't watching YouTube videos. This is time where you put in effort to push forward. Four hours is the minimum. If you could do 10 hours, amazing. And finally, I do want to say this. The first time I tried this, this completely failed. So when I did this the first time around, it didn't work out. And I gave up for about three to six months and then tried again. And that's when everything changed. And I'm telling you now, just be persistent, put your best foot forward. I'm not saying that you're going to have to do a three month process and then it fails and then you try again six months later. What I'm saying is that put your best effort forward if you've tried this before or if you've heard something like this before or maybe you tried to do this before. Start with a clean slate as if you don't know anything. You're trying to learn more, expose yourself to more new systems of doing this. So let's get into it now. Here's the process from start to finish it is going to be five steps. We're going to walk through all of them. A lot of details involved. So there are timestamps below to save you time. If you want to fast forward or come back to a section later, five sections. Let's begin with section one. So the first thing you're going to want to do is build three websites. You're going to want to build three websites for small businesses, for nonprofits, for anyone around you. Ask around, find people who need websites and build it for them. Whether it's a nominal fee or for free does not matter. The goal right now is not to make money. It is to build expertise and have a portfolio. So what we're trying to do is build things that you would put in your portfolio so you can get more work just like that. So build a consultant's website, build a small business website, build a local business website, build a website for a friend, a family member, a nonprofit, whatever it may be. Find someone who needs a new website and go build it for them. The timeline for this is 30 days. You want to build these three sites in 30 days. This is a rush. Most projects take a bit of time. But I want you to move and I want you to move quickly and put a lot of effort behind this because this is the biggest hurdle. They say the hardest part of success isn't long term discipline. It's building the habit. So you need to build the habit of getting into building sites consistently. You're going to have 30 days to accomplish this part of the project. And here are some tips and advice for this part of going from corporate life to freelance life or just making 5k on the side. First, go to platforma.ws and go check out their templates. You could buy the templates, but you don't necessarily need to. They have a page where you can see all the templates. You want to build sites that look just like this. Do not reinvent the wheel. Do not try to be way artsy or fancy. It's way too early for that. Learn how to build a standard website logo top left call to action top right with the menu right next to it. And then on that homepage header, big background image with some headline text and a button dead center. 
that is where you want to begin. You don't want to be creating something fancy where the menu's in the bottom right or some crazy thing. Start with basic UI UX principles. It will take you so far. Next, use Parkinson's law, which is the amount of time you give something is the amount of time it takes. So with Parkinson's law, give yourself seven to 10 days to go through this whole process. And if you're working with a client, that means revisions too. You want to work quickly and set a clear tone with the client that from today, two weeks from now, you are going to have a brand new website. Now, let's say you cannot find a client that you could build a website for and you need to get these three. Well, what you can do is build a fake website with a fake domain, do the whole thing. You'll go buy the domain from GoDaddy, eight to 12 bucks, it should not be expensive. Then you'll actually pay for the site once it's ready to launch because it has to be live for people to preview it. And then from there, you'll build out what you want to build. So you build out the site, build out everything you need assets wise to get it up and running. Now that might sound like a daunting task. Simplify, keep it simple. The name can be anything. It really does not matter. What you're doing is building expertise and showing that you have the skill set. Okay, so that is part one. Part one is build three websites. Now, this is part two. Part two is build the fourth website, which is going to be your website, a portfolio website. And this is what you're going to do with this website. You're going to build five pages. You're going to build the home page. You're going to build the services page. You're going to build an about page because people need to know why they're working with you versus not just what they're getting. Step four is you're going to build a portfolio page and part five, not step four, part four and part five is you are going to build a contact page, a clear way for people to contact you, book a call with you, whatever that might be. Again, may sound like a lot, but we're going to keep it really simple. You sell website services. That is it. Don't go market 27 things website services. Okay. So the services page, you're going to have three packages. Your packages are going to look something like this. The first smallest package is going to be three to five pages. You would build three to five pages for the client. The second one, five to eight. And the third one, eight to 12 slash e-commerce. It could be an e-commerce website and basically price it accordingly. You could start with 500, 750, 950. You can start with 750, 950, 1500. That's actually what I started with. And the numbers were actually 749, 949, and 1449, I believe. I forget if it was 1499 or 1449. One of those. Anywhere between 500 to $2,000 is reasonable for a brand new designer. Then from there, for your portfolio page, you're going to show the three websites you built. Plus, you're actually going to show the fourth one, which is your actual portfolio website. It is 100% okay to show the website you built for yourself. Because sometimes when people come to your site, they're going to say, oh, I want something like that. And that's probably the bigger tip for step one and step two. Build things that people will point at and say, I want a site that looks like that. Again, that's why you're not getting fancy and recreating the wheel. Later on in your design career, you can do that. But starting out, build things that people can relate to. Okay, now back to your portfolio website. For your about page, give people a clear why with working with you. Why should they work with you? This is really important. I remember a lot of my first clients came to me because they thought I was a human. They saw me as a human, someone who did charity work on the side and someone who had a big heart for helping people. And so when they saw that, that really helped draw them in to connect with me. Now, when I started out, I didn't know that was actually going to be a big part of it. I just wanted to share my whole life with people so they can see that I was human and it actually worked really well. Next, for the contact page, you can have a form that says name, email, phone number, details about the project. I would recommend that and or probably I'd recommend this more, go to like calendly.com or acuity.com or whatever the domains are 
and go build a scheduling tool. So somebody could book a call with you right away. That way you don't have to go back and forth in email and you could get on the phone with them. That first call with them is gonna be so valuable, so important, and you could already set your schedule so they see it, they book it, there's no wasted time in the process. And if they wanna move, you wanna move as well, especially for those first few projects. Your portfolio website should only take you about a week to build. If it takes longer than that, it, you're taking way too much time becoming a perfectionist. Don't worry about that now. 80% rule, deliver at 80. Don't go to perfection. Just put some details on there. Get the site up and running. Use the wireframes that I mentioned before. Build a clean site and go from there. So step one was build three websites. Step two was build your portfolio site and show off all your work. Now let's talk about step three. Now, in my opinion, step three is probably the hardest part, but we're talking about getting clients consistently. This is the marketing component of this. When you're just starting out, how are you gonna do this? You don't have a lot of credibility. You don't have a lot of position in the market. You don't have a lot of SEO built up. How are you gonna do this? Okay, so here are options for you. The first one is join Facebook groups. So any Squarespace Facebook group that you find, join it. Doesn't matter anything else, just join them and start participating in those groups. Next, an option could be for you to run ads. Scary? I know, it sounds a bit scary, but I'll tell you this. When I first started, I ran Google ads and it actually worked really well for me. You can try it as well, I won't hold you back but what i would say is that now it's a lot more saturated for the keywords i was targeting so i don't know if it'd work the same way but again if it works for you amazing i ran google ads i got a lot of my clients that way for a really affordable price maybe 30 to 60 even like 80 bucks initially for a 1500 dollar project that's totally worth it to me so you could run Google ads, you could run Facebook ads, you can run Bing ads, you can run ads maybe on one of your favorite sites that you think a lot of designers would go visit, any of those. Next, build profiles on Upwork, Fiverr, freelancer.com. Just go to Google, type in freelance websites and try to build as many profiles as you can. Next, post that you are a website designer on your social media platforms. Tell everyone on your social platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, whatever you are using, tell people that you are now designing websites and taking clients. And then you could actually point them to your website, which is amazing. Next, tell family and friends. Go tell all your loved ones that you are now a website designer and if they know anyone who needs a site that you can help. In the long run, I actually don't think those are the most ideal clients, but in the beginning, you're starting out. So just learn a process that you can use with whoever will give you the opportunity to build your portfolio. And following with that, you could actually just go into your phone and text everybody you know and let them know that you are now a website designer because someone will know someone who's looking for that type of help. Now, two mindset things to think about in this part of the process. Focus on testing things, right? In that, do not get caught up on the dollar, the price tag. You'll do that later. But now, focus on building expertise. Focus on how you work with people, delivering amazing customer service, going through the process of delivering the first draft, revisions, second draft, how to launch a site. You wanna get good at all that back and forth as soon as you can, because the sooner you get better at that, the more you can charge. And like I said at the beginning of this point, once you find something that works, you will feel so energized. It is the most magical moment of joy when you find a system of getting clients consistently. It will radically change your life. If you've never done that before, you've never been a freelancer consistently like that, it will radically change your life. I know it did for me. I know it's it's happened for some of the people I've I've taught and coached. It is an amazing experience. And quick little commercial break because this is so valuable. We have some tools on our website, one of them being a designer starter kit. It will help you go from zero to 100 fast. There's a proposal in there. I walk you through how to set it up and how to use it. I call it my 10 minute proposal. Literally, I could customize it in just a few minutes and send it off to a client for a 5, 10 or 15K project. I also have my top 10 plugins in there that I've built or my team has built and that we use on websites. 
And also we have a lot of other resources as well that are tied into it with say the principles that I use on how I build sites, the system I use on how I build sites with clients. And finally, my designer starter kit. The designer starter kit is a site built with a design page and an image block page that you can use to customize a site quickly and easily from the beginning. So go check the links down below. There's that resource and a ton of other resources that can be helpful for you to go from zero to 100 fast. Okay, so we've gone through the majority of the harder things. One, two, and three are definitely going to take some work, but step four is really important for you. All right, so this is what we're going to do. You need to create a process for your clients. Now, I just mentioned this a little bit in the designer starter kit, but I'm going to walk through it just a bit so you have a sense of it. You need to learn how to communicate as a freelancer so that the person you're working with, the client, feels secure and confident that you know what you're doing and you know how to take them through the journey. You would not hire a personal trainer who doesn't know how to work out. You want someone who knows how to take you from beginning to end in a safe way so you don't hurt your back, so you don't hurt your leg, and that you launch correctly. So a few tips here. You want to have a clear process that includes revisions and you number the revisions. So I'll build the site for you. It'll be 1500 bucks. It'll include two revisions and up to 10 pages. That is a project. That is a scope that you can work with. Make sure you communicate to the client, whether on that intro call or in the proposal. It's an important thing that they know the process because you could always point back to the process of how the project's going to work. Even if the client wants to swim a different way, you can tell them, sorry, no, this is how the process works. Two, do 50% payment up front and do 50% of payment before you launch the website. This is huge. A lot of people wait for payment after the site is launched. They never end up getting payment. I have never not gotten payment. Say it another way, I have always gotten paid. There's never been a project I have not been paid for. And it's because I work off of the client's motivation. They want to launch their site. Well, we will launch it once final payment is made because I have to transfer ownership to them. So that process, again, I detail it a lot further in other YouTube videos and in content on the website, but that is something you definitely wanna make sure you stay ahead of. For payment, use PayPal or QuickBooks. I don't like QuickBooks because you have to pay a monthly fee plus a percentage of the transaction, but everyone knows QuickBooks, so choose your battles, right? So PayPal or QuickBooks, is great. I highly recommend not using a Venmo or something unless it's like a friend. Venmo kind of works, but in this case, you want to show yourself as a professional. And if you're working with a business, they're going to want to do a transaction in a professional way. Venmo is kind of professional, but you want to do it in a way that really holds ground. At the end of the day, it's not a huge difference if you end up using Venmo, but I just recommend starting out use PayPal. It's free. You set up an account, you can make an invoice, they could pay. It's simple. Next, always be ahead of the client. You do not want a client emailing you, hey, where's the project or what can I expect next? You always want to tell the client. So if they deliver the content to you, you'll say, hey, thank you for the content. I'm reviewing it now. I'll let you know if I have any questions by tomorrow. But if everything's good to go, I will have your first draft to you in two weeks, which will be this specific date. And I will send it to you then. That way the client knows what to expect. They're not sitting in a guessing space. I do that through the entire process. They always know where we're at and what's next. Finally, learn how to say no. This is a big one. If you have a people pleasing tendency inside, this is going to be hard, but you have to learn how to define scope, how to stay on board with the project, how to stay on board with the process and not get lost in just the chaos of what the client wants or thinks. The client may be afraid, they may not want to launch. There might be a lot of things. So learning how to say no to a client is so valuable. Finally, we are at step five. So step one, you built three sites. Step two, you built your portfolio site. That was about four to five weeks in. Step three, you went to go get clients and you just started marketing the life out of your projects, which is kind of a mix of step three and step four. You market it and you start doing them. And that's probably about a month. Now, that gets you to about two and a half months into this process. So by that point, you should be able to get some type of consistent flow of clients, whether it be one client every three weeks or it be one client every two weeks, whatever that is. Once you get there, 
this is the next goal and this is how you're going to build to the 5k and at this point actually you could start thinking about leaving your corporate job at that three month mark this is what i call the rule of 10. the rule of 10 is this you basically want to build 10 websites before you question anything don't ask if you're good at it yet don't ask if your sites are are worth it yet don't ask if you know how to work the client relationship yet in the first one to three projects first four to five six or seven you're going to struggle with a lot of this new fundamentals this new learning process this entire new system that you've developed by the 10th project you should have a better grip on if this actually works for you or if it doesn't and then from there decide if you want to stay with it or adjust in the beginning of the video i mentioned that i tried this process out I tried this process out with a friend and it didn't work. That was September, I think 2016. And then I tried again in about March, I think it was March of 2017. So about six, seven months later. And within four days of starting to run Google ads, I got my first client. And then from there, a week later, I got my next client. And then from there, four days later, I got my next client. Within a hundred days, from that initial start, I ended up paying off about $20,000 of debt in about 100 days. And I was debt free. And that's when my business started. Now what I focus on, I've built over 150 websites, I probably touched somewhere between 700 to 800 websites on top of that. So somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand websites I've consulted on. And now my goal is to deliver a thousand pieces of content, whether that be on YouTube or YouTube shorts or in articles or whatever that might be, because the more you do it, the more you progress. And that's a fundamental belief I have here. So if you're just starting out, don't beat yourself up as you start, do it one step at a time, put yourself out there. It's risky, it's vulnerable, but at a certain point when you have the joy in business of knowing that you could create wealth through a product that you deliver, everything changes. Guys, this was a long video. If you made it to the end, drop a comment below. You are my type of people, okay? So drop a comment below. Let me know you made it to the end. You could drop an emoji or just say all the way to the end, okay? From there, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Last two things. If you got value from the video, hit the like button. And if you want more content like this, subscribe. We literally publish three videos, if not more, a week right now to help someone like you go from corporate life to freelance or make new money on the side or become a website designer or learning how to double your rate. Any of that, we cover those topics for you to grow. With that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.